Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. My name is Eric Galanti. Um, it's great to have all of you. First time since, is that me? Or? Okay. Um, first time since 2019, we're all together, so it's great to be here. Um, we're going to do this a little differently here today. Um, so for the coaches and players, we'll call you up in alphabetical order, rotating back between men and women's teams. Um, we'll have more than one team up here at once, um, and you can ask your questions directly to the players and the coaches, and um, we should have fun here today. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in with the Commissioner of the Hockey Association, Steve Metcalf, to start with some remarks, and then we'll get started. Thank you, Eric. Uh, good morning. I just want to just quickly say welcome. It's so great to see everyone in person after, like Eric mentioned, uh, not being together in person for a couple of years, and, and now all being here as we uh, kick off another season. Um, excited to get the season started, and uh, just walking into the building today, I couldn't help but be reminded of last time many of us were here, uh, or certainly a number of us were here, or watching the games uh, at the Frozen Four last April. Uh, some of the best college hockey and uh, really, really successful weekend here at the Garden. So I guess when I come to the Garden, I think of uh, championships and uh, a great place to start start uh, our media day as we kick off our season. Uh, two exciting notes, which I'm sure everyone saw the news yesterday from, uh, from Hockey East and Fenway. We're going to do some Frozen Fenway games again after um, being off for a couple of years. So we have uh, one women's game, two men's game scheduled for the weekend of January 6th and 7th. So obviously we're super excited about that. And then um, uh, the Friendship Four in Belfast, we have UMass and Lowell uh, this Thanksgiving weekend. So that tournament is back and we hope to continue that uh, as we go forward with not only a men's, but also a women's version uh, over in Belfast, uh, Northern Ireland. So that's really a fantastic event for any of you that uh, participated in that. Um, I also want to just quickly acknowledge uh, the passing of uh, longtime supervisor Dan Shakti, who passed away last weekend, was uh, our men's supervisor officials for eight years in the league, um, finished his time with Hockey East right as I was getting started, but obviously I knew Dan, and um, so a big loss for the officiating community. So. Um, just wanted to recognize Dan. And so without further ado, because I think the people that you most want to hear from are the coaches and the players, let me just quickly turn it over to Brian Smith. Uh, Brian Smith, our Associate Commissioner, for a quick awards presentation, and then we'll get to the program with the players and coaches. But uh, thanks all for coming. Thanks, Steve. Uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, I'm excited to be back here, even though it's a very busy time of year for us. It's, it's nice to be busy this time of year after the last two years. Uh, I'll be very quick. Um, last time I gave out this award was 2019, I guess, to, to Mark Diver, who I know is here somewhere. Um, I didn't have many remarks written down for that, uh, but I had a personal story. And the guy I'm going to introduce today, uh, every time I would see him get up to talk, he would never have anything super written down and he'd just kind of wing it. And I would always look at him and say, I will never do that. Um, and here I am doing that, so I feel like that's a good way to honor him. Um, the Concan and Media Award uh, has kind of shifted in recent years to be given to somebody that has a large impact on the promotion um, and, uh, and care, really, stewardship of Hockey East. Uh, Joe Britannia is the guy who's probably put, put more time into Hockey East than anybody else um, over the last of the life of the league. Uh, 23 years as the commissioner, um, a, a long time as uh, as the leader of a conference that, that saw so many great things, so many great um, media exposure, so many great events. Uh, for me personally, he is Mr. Hockey East. It always has been. Um, and to me, as a, as, a, as a person, took a chance on me nine years ago as a, as a really young kid coming out of USA Hockey, gave me the chance to be here um, and, and to grow and really hopefully carry on a lot of his work. Um, so it means a lot to me to be able to introduce him for an award, uh, which is, is not something I, I necessarily had on my, my to-do list when I, when I first took the job. Um, so there's really not more that I can say that hasn't already been said or written about. Uh, absolute legend, a really pleasure, uh, my pleasure to, to call him a friend. Um, this year's Joe Con Canada Media Award winner, Joe Britannia.
This is different. Yeah. So as I said to Brian, this is different. Uh, I presented 20 of these or 20 plus. I know all the former recipients. I was very pleased to get the call from Brian and somewhat surprised. Um, my connection to the league is more as an administrator, though I've always thought of myself as a, a little bit more than that, a writer, a broadcaster, uh, a coach. Um, so it's special because I know I knew Joe Cannon very well. I see some of the past winners that are here that I have known. Um, but the other reason it's important to me is when I left the commissioner's job, it was during the COVID spring of uh, 2020. And I never really had a chance for closure um, with the league. There was no opportunity for an event, even though I did a little bit of my farewell tour and dropped a few pucks and picked up a few jerseys. Uh, there wasn't that one moment where um, I could acknowledge the people uh, that I worked with for a quarter of a century. So I know that you've got all these other things coming up here, but I do want to take a second to, to at least right the ship in that sense. Um, I was hired in 1997 because a group of coaches went to the, I think then nine athletic directors. Uh, they hired me. Um, in the time, I've, I've had great uh, staff to work with. Um, Brian, um, it's funny how the rest of us age and Brian doesn't. Uh, but my PR people from Noah Smith to Pete Soros to Brian and um, Kathy Winters was my longtime assistant. And or my wife's also Kathy. I, I've, I've noted that I spent most of my days nodding and saying, sure, Kath, whatever, uh, whether I was at work or at home. Um, my supervisor of officials from Brendan Sheehy to, uh, to DeCap to Dan, who was just acknowledged. And uh, even though I didn't work alongside of Murph, I, I, he, he has been gracious, as has Steve Metcalf, to keep me involved in some way uh, since I left. I'm, I'm now actually still a commissioner. I'm starting my 40th year as a commissioner as I'm working for a junior hockey league, uh, working with 18 to 20 year old kids trying to get into college. So I'll I'm still going to rinks. My my year still starts the day after Labor Day, like for so many of us. And uh, I'm very thrilled to add this to my uh, to my office that looks like a 12 year old with a big budget um, outfitted uh, between figurines and memorabilia. But this will have a special place. So thank you, uh, Hockey East. Thank you, everybody. All right, so like I said, we're going to get started. We're just going to do this in alphabetical order. So we'll start with the uh, representatives of the men's teams from Boston College and Boston University. So come on up, and then we'll just keep going down the line. Um, we'll have a microphone going around. Finn will have a mic. And if you have a question, please just state your name and affiliation to start with. And you can direct your question to any of the participants up here. All righty, so we have two new head coaches with us, Greg Brown for Boston College and Jay Pandolfo for BU, as along with Dominic Fansori and Marshall Warren. Um, I'll have each coach just start with a brief opening statement, and then we'll open it up for questions. Coach? Um, very happy to be back in Hockey East. Um, I have a lot of fond memories from my 14 years as an assistant, and uh, I know how tough the league it is and how competitive it is. And I just think, looking at the you know the preseason rankings and everything, we're going to have a lot of work to do. Have our hands full, but we're looking forward to the challenge. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Jake Pendolfo. Uh, first time head coach. I'm uh, looking forward to it. Uh, it's been great uh, getting to know the other coaches uh, in the league. Uh, there's, there's a lot of great ones, so it's going to be competitive, and uh, you know I'm, I'm really looking forward to it this year. Thanks. All right, so we'll open it up for questions. If you have a question, you can raise your hand, and we'll bring the microphone around to start. <laughs> Uh, 
Thank you, John. Anyways, obviously history here for the first time in eons. There is a rookie head coach on both sides of the bench uh, for when BC and BU meet. Um, obviously not rookies in the sense that you're new to coaching, but new in your respective positions. So uh, history, I'm sure it's not hot on you guys. The new era for both schools. Um, yeah, I mean it's obviously always been a huge rivalry, so it's exciting. You know, we're we're geographically close together. Um, I was fortunate when I was at BU where BC was down a little bit, so I was on the um, right side of it more often than not. Uh, but I expect it's going to be very competitive over the, the next few years. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's a lot of fun for the players and the fans, and I'm excited to be part of it. That yeah, same. Uh... You know, Jay and I both lived in this rivalry a long time uh, as players and then just being familiar with the city. So when you have that, uh, that location, that, uh, you know, just the, the whole atmosphere, I think you get to see each other all the time. You're, you're combating each other as far as recruits. You're combating each other in every game. Um, the bragging rights for the alumni, all that is a huge part of it. And uh, it's great to be back involved in it. Great. Just what does it look like to be back at BU and I'll ask for a second. It's great to be back. Uh, coming back last year, it was fun to be a part of it again. I hadn't been part of college hockey for a long time. Um, this year, it's really exciting. I'm, I'm fortunate uh, to have, I think this year we have 17 upperclassmen, which isn't typical for a BU team. So it's helping me a lot and making my job a lot easier. We, ha we have a mature group uh, with Dom Fensori. We got a, a, a big leadership group this year, and it, it's helping me in my first year. So it's really exciting. What are you expecting out of Drew and Matt? And what are you hoping to, to get from uh, that? I expect Drew to have a, a huge year. Um, he's put a lot of work in this summer. Uh, he's dedica dedicated to the program, and he's also been named an assistant captain, too. It just shows the type of leadership he has. You don't see that a lot. You don't see a lot of coaches naming um, goalies assistant captains, but he deserves it, and uh, we're proud of him. Other questions? I'll jump in with one for both of you, Marshall and Dom, being named captains this year. Could you each just speak a little bit to what that means to you to be able to be the captain of the team? You know, so yeah, obviously it's uh, it's a huge honor, and um, you know I love Boston College, and I've had such a good three years here, and I'm excited for my fourth. And um, I think we got a good group, and I'm just excited to lead the boys, and um, I'm super excited to to get it going. Yeah, like Marsh said, um, yeah, it's a huge honor. And um, like, like Coach said, we have a huge uh, huge upperclassman class, and especially a senior class. So um, it's going to be awesome to lead with them. And, um, you know, I'm really excited for the year. And um, we have high expectations, so it's, uh, it's going to be a fun year. Um, Greg, I'll ask you this question. It was just announced that Steve mentioned that you guys will be participating in Frozen Fenway this year playing UMass. Could you just give a brief thought on um, what that means, the opportunity to be able to play in Fenway Park again? Yeah, I've been fortunate to be in at least three or four outdoor games, and uh, they are a special, real special event, I think. The players get so excited for it. They've been talking about it in our locker room already, I think. So the opportunity to go back to Fenway, um, you know, I'm very excited to be a part of it. I think uh, it's just, it's a whole nother spectacle. Obviously, you're excited to play and compete against UMass, but then to have it in that setting really makes it special. Marshall, same question for you. Yeah, I know everyone's excited for that game, and I think it's it's super cool playing at Fenway Park. I have not done it yet, so I'm excited for that, and I think everyone else is too. 
Jay, I'll ask this question to you. As coming in, obviously, you've been around the program, certainly, so a lot of this is not new, but as the first-time head coach, tell me a little bit about your process of goal setting for your group this year, as you talked about with a lot of upperclassmen coming back. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for us, um, we're not trying to look too far ahead. Uh, I think as a group, we feel like we have a really good team and we could go on a pretty good run, but the biggest thing for us, again, again is to uh, kind of establish a culture at BU and, and how we want to play and how we look uh, every night when uh, we're competing. And, and that's the biggest thing that we've tried to establish as a group. We're, we've talked more about the process and the results. We feel like if, if we do things the right way, the results will take care of themselves. Coach Brown, I'll ask you the same question, basically, coming in after a couple of years away, coming back. Tell me a little bit about the process of setting goals for your group this year. Yeah, right now we've we've kept really short, narrow sighted goals. Um, you know, we're just trying to I don't have to create a culture because the culture under Jerry was was always world class, but we do have to, you know, just be excited to play the way we're going to play, figure out, you know, how detailed we're gonna be, how thorough we're gonna be, and then move from there. So like I said, we haven't set goals past just getting better for this training camp and be excited to get started on October 1st. Mm -hmm. Any last questions for this group? Awesome, all set. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks. So next up, we'll bring up the um, players and coaches from the UConn men's program and the Maine men's program. All right, so for our next group here, we have UConn head coach Mike Cavanaugh and Roman Canal. And then from Maine, we have head coach Ben Barr and Jacob Sirota. Uh, same thing, coaches. I'll have you start with a brief opening statement, and then we'll get to questions. Well, first, uh, it's great to be back in the garden. And one, I'd like to uh, congratulate Joe. I, um, when Joe started, I was also in the league. So I worked the entire time Joe with Joe in the league. He was such a great mentor, uh, for me throughout those years as an administrator and developed a great relationship with him. And I couldn't think of a better guy to get the Concannon award, Joe. So congratulations to you. Looking forward to a great year. Um, I think every year the parity in this league, uh, continues to get better and better. And it's very hard to distinguish between, you know, a lot of times the uh, 11th place team and the first place team. You'll see that upset all the time in this league. And I think that's what makes it so great. So we're excited, uh, you know, af after last year to, to get back at it and uh, compete for a trophy. I'll echo uh, Cavs sentiment. Congrats, Joe. Um, you know, as an assistant for many years, it was always, uh, you always know, treated everybody with a lot of class and respect, and I always appreciated it. So, um, congrats to you. Uh, as far as our, our team is concerned, um, you know, obviously we're, we have 16 new players, uh, you know, in our program this year at Maine, and we're looking forward to hopefully, uh, you know, building our program back to to being a, a competitive program in our in our conference every year. And as Cav mentioned, it's that's harder to do now than maybe it was 10, 15 years ago, even uh, with everybody being so competitive. Um, you know, so it's a it's a challenge for us, which is a, a challenge we're excited about. I know Jacob's excited to be our leader to to get us started on that path. Um, I'm taking it one day at a time. So it's uh, it's exciting times for us with all of our new players, and we're just ready to get back at it. All right, same thing. If you have a question, please state your name and affiliation, and we'll have the microphone going around. Um, I think the experience you just learn how to how to manage a day-to-day -day and, met, and you learn the challenges and the opportunities that you have at your particular institution. Um, you know, we, you know, on the ice, you obviously need to get better and that, but that starts with a lot of things, um, you know, behind the scenes that we have to get better at, which has been for me, the, the biggest thing, especially in the off season to, to take care of and, and find a better environment or create, create, the best environment we can for our student athletes. Um, so that's, that's been something as an, as an assistant, you don't, you're involved in a day to day and, and maybe as a head coach, it's, it's more incumbent up upon you to, to make those changes and, and work on making those changes.
Uh, Andrew Mahoney, Blossom Globe. Uh, Kev, you guys had quite the run last year, came so close to winning the, the tournament uh, championship. Does that, from the outside, change expectations? I know you, the expectations for the program are always high from within, but are you feeling any, not pressure, but just, I guess, extra support from the community, or is there a boost around the community? Yeah, I think the expectations are always to win a Hockey East championship. Now, are they always realistic? Maybe not. And I think what we did by what we accomplished last year, I think now our team has realistic expectations of we want to get back and we want to win. And, um, you know, throughout my career, uh, I remember times... You know, when I, when I was at BC, when we first went to the NCAA championship in 98, that totally shifted the way we thought the next year. And it was like, we're going to get back there. And I think that's where our team's thinking right now. And, and that's the best part about that run last year was uh, the internal expectations uh, and the drive to get back and uh, play for another championship. Uh, Mike McMahon, College Hockey News for Ben. Uh, how how different is, excuse me, you talk about 16 new players, but how different is that approach? Is the approach different now than maybe it would have been five or six years ago when 16 new players meant 16 new freshmen? And now it's a lot of freshmen, but you still you can add some guys uh, through transfers that, that bring some experience. How much does that help that group as you try to rebuild? Uh, I don't, yeah, it's definitely, a di you, you can go about it different ways than you could a few years ago. Um, I don't know if anyone knows, I think that can be really, it can be a really good thing and it can also go the other way. Um, but it, it's definitely a different factor where, you know, you used to just, if you bring in, if you needed 16 players, you have 16 freshmen and now it's, you can mix that in. We have five transfers this year. Um, so it's, it's just another, it's another element to think about and manage and, uh, you know, we're hoping that bringing some more experienced student athletes in will help us rather than having all 16 freshmen. Um, but time will tell, you know, so far it feels, it feels like they're the right people to, to fit what we're trying to do, but we haven't played a game yet either. So everything feels great for you, you know, before the season starts. So, but it's definitely different than, you know, going through it at other schools, um, you know, that I've experienced that at it's a, it's a different, it's a different, um, it's a different model and it's a different aspect of our game that wasn't there a couple years ago. Jacob, I'll throw one in for you, understanding all those new faces. Tell me a little bit about the challenges and the opportunities it presents for you as one of the leaders of the group and meshing everything together here in the early part of the season. Well, I think, you know, it's really hard when uh, you have a lot of new faces sometimes and uh, getting things together might take some time, but we're really fortunate that we got 12 really solid players that came back from last year and uh, all of us we make a solid group of people that can lead the whole team and yeah we're just excited you know to go to Colorado and see see what we got Roman I'll ask you sort of a, a similar question in terms of your leadership of a group that like coach said accomplished so much last year and has arenas coming and things and so many it, what seems like high milestones for the program what's the key for you as a leader of that group to try to keep all of that in check and, and be able to build on it yeah no I mean there's definitely a lot of excitement this year uh coming the new rank and uh you know, a really good finish from last year by us, but uh, we do have a lot of new faces as well. With that comes a learning curve, uh, introducing them to the culture and the system. So uh, the new players have done really well. Um, they've been great the first few weeks of practice so far. So um, it's a lot of excitement for this year and we're looking forward to it. Um, for both of you, for UConn, the announcement of the Frozen Fenway as well, and, and you guys getting the chance to play Northeastern, maybe just a comment on, on what that means for the program. I think it's great. I think it's such uh, a unique event and it's, I don't know how great it is for the coaches sometimes, but uh, certainly the players. And I think, you know, if, if our, every four years, if our players get an opportunity to play at an iconic venue like Fenway Park, uh, you can't pass up, pass it up. It's, it's wonderful experience for them and certainly our fan base as well. Yeah, no, I'm excited too. Uh, I played with guys uh, that got to experience that a few years before me. Um, they had nothing but good things to say about it. And I actually just went to Fenway for the first time this summer. So uh, 
it was pretty cool and I'm looking forward to it. Any last questions for this group? All good? All right, thanks very much. So we'll keep it moving. Next, we'll have the women's representatives from Boston College and Boston University, and just keep going alphabetically. Okay, so for this group, we have Boston College head coach Katie Crawley, Boston University head coach Brian DeRocher, and from BU, Nadia Mativi, and then UConn head coach Chris McKenzie. We'll do the same thing as the other groups. I'll have the coaches start with an opening statement, and then we'll get to questions. Yeah, um, just really excited to uh, get the season going. Um, we have a good group of returners coming back for us, and and uh, I think everyone's pretty excited to to get on the ice and and uh, get ourselves ready to, to to prepare for a tough season. Obviously, our league uh, keeps getting better and better, and, and every game um, is, is a battle. So you got to be you got to be game ready, and and uh, we're working towards that uh, right now. Uh, I'll uh, extend a uh, shout out to Joe as well from the women's side and echo what Cab said, uh, uh, a long, long distinguished career that continues to go on. Uh, as far as our team, we're excited to get going. Um, you know, every year is a new year. Uh, one class departs and one class comes in and it changes the complexion of the team. But uh, everybody knows that every night's a battle. Um, we've got to fight hard. The people at the top uh, compete like crazy and the people at the bottom are ready to knock you off on any given day so uh, if there's probably one charge for most of it, it's to uh, try to slow down that northeastern juggernaut we'll see if that happens uh, just a quick congrats to Joe and uh, from from our program. Thank you. Uh, and I want to thank you for the signed copy of your book. That was wonderful, too. Uh, our program uh, going into this year will look a little different than years past. Uh, just losing about 10 uh, grad transfers slash seniors. Uh, the complexion of our team's changing. So we're looking at players that are moving into new roles and figuring that out and going from there. We're excited for the challenge, excited for the new building in January and uh, look to continue to build our program every year at facing a tough league uh, where every night anything can happen. So we're excited for that challenge. So any questions to start for this group? Uh, Katie, uh, just how will you use your international experience that you return this year, especially with Hannah finally getting a world championships experience? Um, how will you use that to for the team as a whole? Yeah, um, Hannah and, and uh, Kayla are back from the world championships in Denmark and uh, really happy for Hannah, as you said.
both programs getting to a hockey's final last year and, and kind of continuing the momentum, the arena, as you mentioned, can you kind of give us a whole overview of sort of the excitement around UConn hockey right now as kind of a group and, and where you guys are both growing as a program? I just, we've seen a change just in the overall energy excitement on campus and say, what's this new building being built? And, uh, they know where the rink is now on campus, to be quite honest with you. Um, but it, it, it's exciting to see, I guess on the recruiting trail, there's some differences. I think cab would, would echo that too. And, and just, it's, it's another part of our story of our program. So we're seeing it evolve and we're both being a part of that. And, and this building is going to change that story for us a little bit. Nadia, tell me a little bit about your expectations coming back this year and being part of the leadership group for BU as you guys try to continue your, your success as a program. Yeah, we have, uh, we definitely have high expectations. Um, we have a great leadership group, um, great captain. So we're ready to go. Um, there's a great amount of healthy competition on the team, um, which is great. Um, we set really high standards, so we're excited to, to get going and start the season. I'll ask one more for all the coaches. Could you just speak a little bit to how you feel like, I know we, we mentioned Northeastern, but how the depth of the league and the depth of the sport on the women's side has continued to grow over your time as a head coach of your programs? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously the, the sport of women's hockey has grown tremendously. Um, I, I think just in general, right? Um, from the 98 Olympics where no one knew it was a, you know, a, a sport uh, to, um, you know, now there's so many more club teams that we recruit from to internationally, so many more teams that are uh, vying for medals. Um, and, and in our, our college world, there's so many more teams that can win a championship and and can compete for a championship um no matter what league you're in or where you come from um and i think that's just a a, a testament to the players that come through all of our programs and and who have um helped grow the game and and uh make it a make it a sport that people want to watch and, and people want to see and and i think that's taken its whole a whole new um you know, that's, that's taken our sport to a whole new level every four years when you see it, uh, in a big, on a big stage like the Olympics, but now, you know, we're on TV a lot more, uh, other leagues are on TV a lot more and, and those types of things are just going to help our sport continue to grow and, and people will see how amazing these women's women are that play this game. Yeah, I think Katie mentioned it with the, you know, whatever, 25, 30, 35, 40 percent more women playing the game. You've got great international players like Nadia to my left here. Um, but it's a challenge every year for us. We all have to continue to recruit the best players. And thankfully, the, the support, the facilities, the opportunities we have, uh, you know, in this league give us all a chance as coaches. And uh, we'll continue to try to do our part. Just in the 13 years been involved with the women's game coming from the men's side is I've seen an evolution of the players, the day-to-day -day training, um, everything's bigger, stronger, faster every year. Uh, the opportunities for professional players graduating and professional opportunities, our players and others are signing contracts that didn't exist just even three, four years ago. So it's nice to see there's something maybe after college and hopefully another 10, 20 years from now or sooner, there's uh, another evolution of the game and there's more opportunities. Any last questions for this group? All right, thank you all very much. If you guys are okay, we'll make it work. We'll make it work, yeah. We'll make it work. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's start with questions for this group, if anyone has any questions. Um, I'm sorry, I skipped the opening statements. Opening statements. Why don't we start there? Yeah. Um, just uh, we're going to have a, a little bit different uh, look this year with our team. Um, nine, uh, nine new players coming in um, and a really good group of um, returners. So we're excited. There's a lot of energy right now in the locker room and uh, on the ice. So we're, we're, um, we're still patiently getting there. Um, somewhat still new uh, program here. Uh, so we're excited to see what we'll do this year. 
I'm happy to be here. I, uh, I'm excited to be a part of this league. Um, a lot of familiar faces in the room. Um, this is not an unfamiliar place to me either, having lived and played in Boston. Um, but it is a new league for me, and uh, I'm excited to be a part of it, and uh, we're going to take it one step at a time. Uh, Joe, just a shout out to you. Um, a little known fact is Joe was my goalie coach when I was little in one of the camps there, a couple of the camps. So um, we have a long history, um, but congratulations for everything that you've accomplished and, and the award today. Um, from our perspective, you know, we're, we're a program similar to Holy Cross where we've got, um, nine new players. And so we're going to, we're testing the waters right now. We're trying to figure out who can play, who can't play and where we're at. Um, we're excited to be on the ice and, and we ended the season last year, um, short of the, the loss against Northeastern in a really good place to finish the year and where we felt that our culture and our, um, our team was, uh, had the right identity and, and was taking steps forward. So. So um, now moving forward from where we are, we have to continue that path for this year. So we're looking forward to that. All right. Any questions for this group? Uh, Kat Cornetta from the Boston Globe. Coach Les Chappelle, uh, your team just keeps building every year. And every year there seems to be that statement win that really helps your program grow. What are, what's kind of your theme going into this season and, and what do you project out of this group? Yeah. You know, I think it's, it's led by our staff, but I think more so by our players. Um, just, um, they want to take a step forward, um, you know, with, with our play. And I, I do think the, uh, the players that we have come in, the nine new players uh, are really strong and I think they're going to help us make a big jump. Um, but I just think our, our leadership has uh, done a fantastic job of, uh, putting us in that position to push everybody and uh, we're concentrating making sure our details and our habits are, are really good um, you know every day all day uh, and so so I I think from a team standpoint there's been a switch that's uh, that's uh, flipped at some point whether it was in the, the spring last year or, um, over the summer and uh, it's really being team led uh, which is always a good thing. Uh, for Aaron, you talked about the kind of the evaluation period that you guys are going through right now with nine new players. I'm sure you'd like to have it settled by the, start, the time the games start, but you know it's probably going to extend into the season a little bit. If you had to kind of gauge it, how how long do you expect a process like that to kind of play out? When when would you like to see a lineup set that you know you're going to roll it every night? Well, I'm impatient. So yesterday, um, however, um, I know that it's going to take some time to build. So we're, we're like every other team right now. I think we're trying to piece things together with the new players meshed with the, um, the returners, the vets. Um, we've got some great players that are returning, um, to my left. Katie is, um, you know, was one of our leading scorers. She's, she's a very talented player and so, uh, and a captain. And so to, to mesh some of the younger players who've got some talent and skill with the older players who, who've got some ability to, to create plays and score some goals that's always going to take time so would I like it have done yesterday yes um, but in reality it's going to take a couple of weeks to just sort it out we've got an exhibition game to start so you know we really have an opportunity to to put lineups out there that maybe won't be the final product but will be ways to test our younger players out and figure out where they fit <laughs> Ma, I'd love to hear a little bit since you've been hired about the process for you of sort of onboarding and getting to know your players and feeling out what you feel like you have as a program. Yeah, I've been thrown into the fire a little bit. Um, I got hired about a month ago, less than a month ago. So um, just got to campus, just trying to iron everything out. I got my assistant coaches, which I'm really excited about. Um, Morgan Trimper here is my captain. She's been amazing. We have a great leadership group. So I hit the ice about a week ago. Um, it's just kind of been an evaluation process. So just trying to figure out what we have. It's going to, like I said, it's going to be one step at a time. It's a huge roster. We have five full lines, 10 defensemen. Um, so yeah, I think we'll just take this year to figure out, figure out where we're at and where we want to go. Mm -hmm. For each of the players, I'd love to hear a little bit about your thoughts of being the leader of your respective teams this year and the expectation that that puts on you as a player. 
Yeah, I think for me, it's been a kind of a whirlwind of a summer. We had a coaching shift and Molly came in kind of last minute. So really taking that role is something I didn't really expect to do quite as quickly as I did. And I learned a lot of stuff through the process and I'm really excited to lead our team this year. I think we have a really good group of girls. Our, our team has really come together and I think Molly and the assistant coaches were a great addition. And uh, I think our expectations this year are high. We uh, demand a lot from each other and we're competitive and ready to go for the year. Yeah, similar to me, um, obviously excited to lead the group. Um, we keep talking about the nine new faces coming in, which just bring a new new life and new energy to our team. Um, but it's been exciting to work um, work with my other two co-captains to mesh, mesh our new girls in with our returners. But all of the girls are awesome, great people, great hockey players. It's been a really fun group to work with, and I'm excited to, to get the season rolling. Aaron, you talked about this a little bit, but jumping off of that playoff win last year, how much can that be a launching pad for what you guys want to keep growing and accomplishing at Merrimack? Uh, yeah, well, we talk a lot about um, a winning mindset, you know, within our locker room. And when you start a new program, obviously you take your hits. And so moving forward to where we are now, we're trying to move past that, you know, that budding program to that established program. And so a lot of that is the change in mindset. Um, so really our, our what we're talking about with our players is really just that it's, you know, we did, we accomplished a lot last year and last year's last year, but the fact that we went into those games and, and had that winning mindset is something we can build off of and um, really promote with our team. This is for all the coaches, but I know you recruit from everywhere, but what have you noticed in the New England girls game when recruiting? Is there something that stands out? What do you feel the state of it is? Um, uh, I can start. Um, I, I just think when you look at all the teams that are here and, and all the, the club hockey and the high school hockey, um, there's just a ton of passion that, that I think all the, the young ladies in New England play with. And I think that's something that really stands out. Um, the passion for their teams and um, really, I think, just being, I think, really from this area and how proud they are uh, to play, um, you know, for their, their programs. And so that's clearly going to translate, you know, when they get to college. And um, it's always a great thing to have. I'm not sure that I can really speak to that. Um, coming from the WCHA, I did coach at KUA out here, so I got a little bit of my feet wet in the prep league, but uh, looking forward to, to getting back into that. So a long, long time ago, when I was actually looking at schools myself, really the East was the only place to look, right? And the established programs like the Assabets of the world and, and those types of programs were the ones that we looked at as um, the longstanding traditions of girls hockey. So I, I think there's still a really huge history in the East. And so talking about kind of building off of what Katie talked about is it's just a really, um, the history so rich in the established programs are still very strong programs. And so now these offshoots of those programs have built their programs up, but it still can, carries that Eastern tradition. Um, a lot of those players go on to, to play for um, Team USA. A lot of them go on to the development programs, and, and there's still a huge contingency in the East that travels out to go at a higher level. So um, it's still a great place to recruit. Um, it's a hard place to recruit for, for everybody because there are so many players here, but there are so many players that have so many options. So, um, and especially even now going out West, there's so many options there as well. So um, those Eastern players who used to stay in the East don't always stay in the East anymore. So, um, but it's a, it's crazy um, history that they've always had and, and well-established uh, girls hockey programs all over the place. Any last questions for this group? All set. Thanks very much. All right. We will jump back over to the men's side and call up the players and coaches from UMass and UMass Lowell. Okay, we'll start with a brief opening statement from our coaches, and then uh, we'll open it up for questions. Coach Carlo? Uh, excited to get going again. We've got a lot of new bodies. We have 12 new players on our team, so it's very similar to last year. Uh, it'll be a slow start, and we'll have to try to build as we can and be playing our best hockey at the end of the year, like last year. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. 
here in Lowell, we're, we're very excited about the season. We got a hungry group. We've got a very competitive group. Um, we're using the months of September here to try to uh, slowly get in shape. And we've got a healthy balance between uh, old and new, uh, having nine seniors and, and nine freshmen. So it uh, seems like a hungry group, and we're excited for this thing to get in their way. All right, so we'll open it up for questions. Kyle Grabowski with you is that Greg you mentioned kind of that new group has that been difficult to adjust to or more exciting because I feel like you've had so many mainstays for so long what has that been like just kind of getting just this complete all these new faces in well we have the experience last year we had we had 10 or 11 new faces last year and that was that was new so I think we learned a lot of lessons about what we did to prepare for the season and uh, we opened up against Minnesota State and it, w it wasn't very pretty so uh, we've got Denver early on and I think we learned a lot of lessons about how we can do things differently to, to onboard kids and, and how we want to play the game and maybe push a little harder uh, through the summer like we did and through September. They had announced the frozen Fenway way for you guys last year. What what are you feeling about that? I know you've been there to throw out the first pitches, but like what what is that as an opportunity for for the program and for the guys? Well, it's great. It's great exposure. Uh, we've got a huge fan base through the state, so I imagine we'll have good support. Uh, it's you know that was our first year, my first year at UMass. Mm -hmm. we, we weren't an overly competitive team, so uh, I'm excited to go there, uh, play a great opponent in BC, and it's. It's, it's very memorable. It's it's historic. It's it's fun. It's you know we, we have a lot of good events this year, and, and that's one of them. Um, so hope it's not as cold as it was last time. It was, it was pretty darn cold. Bob Ellis, UMass Little Radio. I'm curious, Norm, in your opening remarks, you uh, referenced uh, nine seniors, nine freshmen. Uh, looking at the roster, the balance, the classes look pretty balanced in a time in college hockey when you're losing people to the pros on a regular basis, as well as uh, the impact of the transfer portal. So, in that you referenced that, how important to you is having those classes balanced? Is it an advantage to have the classes balanced? Well, it's a great question. However, uh, I think as coaches, we have uh, only so much control over uh, some of those factors. Uh, with the guys leaving for pro hockey earlier and earlier, um, you try to have uh, some upperclassmen lead the way. I'm fortunate to have uh, John McDonald as one of my captains to, to my right. Um, I think our leadership is pretty good. So we're going to be uh, looking, f uh, leaning on those guys very heavily early in the season to, uh, to show the young guys what our culture is all about. You mentioned John McDonald. I'd like to direct a question to him, uh, kind of about that topic. Um, 11 new faces. I'm curious how quickly the group meshes as a group. Are there things you, as one of the leaders, one of the veterans on this roster, try to do to involve the new faces more quickly? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think in my time since I've been at Lowell, we've been pretty consistently bringing in uh, relatively large classes. Uh, when I came in as a freshman, we were 13. <clears throat> so I think it speaks a lot to our culture and how we carry ourselves uh, during the preseason and, and just ultimately coming together as a group and, you know, creating goals for ourselves and striving to achieve those. You guys had talked about things you learned from last year and onboarding new players. Have, did you also learn things about kind of being defending champions and kind of what you're going to get from teams and like actually what that looks like and how to prepare guys for kind of getting their shots as, as the back-to-back -back hockey East champs? Yeah, you know, the last three years of UMass was a lot different than the first three years. We felt like we snuck up on a lot of teams uh, in the second, third year in the league, and now um, we, we're learning how prepared we need to be every night, and that's fine. And I think that really helped the development of our players is, is every night we're, we're getting getting the best from our opponents, but that's our league. There's no nights off in our league. It doesn't matter who, who you're playing. Um, but it, it's, it is drastically different. I, I, I did like it when we uh, could sneak up on teams, but that just doesn't happen anymore. 
I'll direct this question to both players, the opportunity to play in the friendship for this year. Um, can you speak a little bit about to what experiences like that outside of the normal day-to-day schedule and the normal day-to-day hockey schedule mean to you as a player to get the opportunity to do that? Scott, I'll start with you. Um, obviously, it's super memorable. Um, it's obviously not the typical environment, and uh, that's honestly kind of like uh, people have said about the Frozen Fenway. Those types of experiences are super fun. Um, they're challenging because uh, you're outside your normal routines, but um, it's it's obviously going to be um, a super exciting trip, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to facing off against these guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Scott made a lot of good points. Uh, I think it's a tremendous opportunity to kind of showcase uh, what college hockey and our league in general can do uh, for people that don't get to see that every day. Um, I also think that traveling uh, overseas just in general as a team is a great way to build uh, camaraderie and kind of make those memories that, uh, that ultimately are why we play hockey to begin with. Scott, going into year two, what are you looking to improve in your own game just after your freshman year? Yeah, um, as a freshman, you kind of come into college hockey, and especially for me, uh, I came directly out of high school. I didn't play any juniors, so um, it was a big step up physically. Um, uh, Over the course of the season, I think the biggest thing I learned is how I need to take care of my body physically um, to handle almost 40 games of um, college hockey and hockey's physicality. So um, I think I made uh, a lot of good strides in the off season in terms of uh, preparing my body and then um, just kind of the, the stuff with the puck is what comes naturally to me. But um, just focusing on uh, keeping well conditioned and, and strong is where I think I'll see a lot of improvement. Thank you. Hey guys, uh, John Doyle, USCHO. Um, can anybody on this panel really speak to the state of the rivalry rivalry between the two schools? A lot of electricity in the rink when you guys meet. Some of the other rivalries in hockey East maybe have a little more history, but as far as recent contenders, like I said, uh, you get the state school thing going. Any comments on that? You know, UMass and UMass, all two teams expected to contend. That's that's all I got. Uh, personally, as a player, I think it's great for the universities. Uh, you know, I think the atmosphere between our programs when we face off in the last few years has grown tremendously. Uh, and I think that that goes to say for uh, the strides that both programs have taken. Uh, you know, I think the state school thing is, is going to just only grow and grow, uh, especially as the programs grow. So it's it's an incredible experience and it's it's always a fun game. Um, yeah, I'll just echo that. Um, the environments when we played each other last year were um, extremely fun to be a part of. And uh, one thing that I think also furthers our rivalry is we're, we're two teams who play very similar styles, very physical games. And uh, every game we're in is a dogfight. Um, it's always a, it seems to be a one goal game or go down to the end with us. So um, I think it's exciting for the fans when uh, they get those types of hockey games. When I got to UMass, it wasn't a rivalry. We've been able to rise up and, and to Lowell's level, and now every time we play, it's a one-goal game, like Scotty said. And a lot of the games have been in big situations. So uh, when I got to UMass, people asked me who your rival was. I, I didn't really know, but when you ask now, it's definitely Lowell. The in-state rivalry is, I think, something that uh, I think the chancellors of both universities really enjoy. And the governor comes out to the games, and it's it's and they're they're tough games. It's not fun going into the wall. They're, they're fans, man. They make you know where you're at. Yeah, I think uh, Carvey brings up some great points. Uh, the rivalry is, is alive. It's it's great. I think it's good for the kids uh, to play against such stiff competition, and uh, it just further enhances the league. Coach Carvel, I'd love to throw one to you. And I think as you look back on a season versus what you're feeling in the moment, sometimes those thoughts can be a little different. Looking back on being able to come out of that last weekend, but then find your best hockey and be able to win another championship and another trophy. Can you speak a little bit to after reflecting on that, the accomplishment of the group to be able to come out of that weekend and find a way to win another championship? Yeah, we, we were fortunate to, to get to Boston. Providence outplayed us in the in the quarterfinal game, and our goaltender stole a game. And 
when you go into that weekend with the other three teams, you don't go in. I didn't go on feeling like, yeah, we're going to win the championship. You, we, we snuck by Lowell in a game we were probably outplayed in and played really, really strong game against UConn. And so reflecting back, yeah, you, you won a championship, but it, you didn't feel like it through the process. It, the games were all three playoff games we played could have gone either way. And we were, we were fortunate to be come out on top. Any other questions for this group? Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Next, we'll call up the representatives of the men's programs from UNH and Providence. Have something, and we'll continue on with our press conferences as we go through. All right, so we'll go through the same procedure. I'll have the coaches start with an opening statement, and then we'll get to questions. Michael, start with you. Sure, excited to be here. Excited to uh, get back home today and, and practice. Uh, Twelve new guys, so um, we have a lot of work ahead of us. But uh, optimistic and excited about our group. Uh, I'm. Very excited. We, we return. Uh, we're going to have eight seniors. It's been a long time since we've had that type of uh, upper class leadership with our group. Um, you know, it, it was a hard summer of reflection. Did a lot of work and uh, we had a good year last year. We finished in the top three in almost every stat uh, within our league except one. And that was goals scored. So been a lot of focus on that. Uh, within our program uh, and excited to get going and, and, and play some hockey in the best league in the country. I also wanted to um, just give a shout out to Joe Britannia on the Kincannon Award and, and let Joe know that even though I called him a lot of Saturday mornings, I never meant what I said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, questions for this group. Mike, you got a lot of questions about your rink for many years. So I'm going to start off with a question about the rink. It's a new rink. And how does that uh, affect uh, the way you're going to play and attack this season? Yeah, I don't think it's going to change the way we, we play or compete. Um, I think uh, we've only practiced there once, so that was yesterday. Uh, but, no, we're excited. It's uh, one less thing uh, our competitors in our league and nationally can use against us in recruiting. Um, you know, I think many of you know that, uh, you know, leaving the Whitmore Center to go play elsewhere was, you know, had become sort of an issue for us. And uh, I'm excited that that's no longer, no longer the issue. I think one thing to be clear about, and I've been asked this, you know, numerous times is, you know, the, the rink had needed repairs, you know, the, the, uh, the, the refrigeration and compressors had failed. And uh, so that was going to be replaced. So we saw it as an opportunity to condense the size of it. So it wasn't that we just woke up one day and said, Hey, let's shrink the, let's shrink the rink. Although I would have liked to have done that, but we know that that's not a, not a reality in, in today's uh, world. So uh, I was, we were, some good fortune and timing uh, for us. I know our, our, uh, our kids are excited about it. I know Norm Bays is really excited about it too. <laughs> Nate, you said this uh, summer was a summer of reflection. What, uh, can you shed some light on what you reflected on? Well, how, how we could be so good in so many areas and not, uh, and, and not um, finish a little higher, you know? It's a tough league, you know? So I think as a coach, you're always reflecting throughout the summer and um, trying to figure out how you can be better and, and get better. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to get ahead. You know, it's, it's the league's too tough it's it's gotten too competitive so um yeah that's that was uh you know some our staff would would basically have a weekly meeting you know and uh, you know to try to cover some of those areas Greg Dudek, Ness, and uh, for Nate, was just wondering what your expectations are for Riley Duran and another season for him. 
We had a great freshman year, you know, um, 10 even strength goals. And he didn't play on the power play. He didn't play on the penalty kill. And he still was able to um, to score 10 goals. Um, so we have high expectations for him. I thought he had a very good World Junior tournament. Um, but, the, you know, the key is he has to stay to his game. He's, uh, he's a hard player. I think the bigger the game, uh, the, the tighter the game, he shows up more. And that's, that's what's exciting, you know, to us as a program is the, the the tougher the game you know like he he makes the bigger impact yeah I was going to ask just uh, the world junior their experience how much do you think that can benefit him well he had never penalty killed before and I didn't tell our staff that going into it because I didn't want it to be held against him but um, he had never penalty killed before and he did he ended up being in our top two penalty killer so um, he's he definitely showed a, a different side of his game Game. I thought he he was able to produce points um, at that level, which is uh, very difficult to do. So I think it was a great growing experience for him. I think um, just like just like uh, Patrick, just like Brett Berard, uh, we also have a Czech player that's coming in to play in the tournament. I think if you're fortunate enough to play in that tournament and represent your country, you're going to get to be a better hockey player. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'll ask both players and direct a question to you. Um, Chase, if you want to start, can you tell us a little bit about your expectations as one of the leaders of your groups this year and, and your individual expectations of how to continue to push the program to the next level? Yeah, for sure. Um, as Coach mentioned, we have 12 new players coming in. So I've heard a lot of different players say they look at it as a big challenge. But for me, I look at it as a great opportunity for our group. Um, we haven't performed to where we wanted to the last few years or since I've been here. So having some new faces, um, I look at it as, a, as an opportunity for me to bring the group closer at the rank. But mainly away from the rink. So um, getting everybody on board with the culture and, and the way we want to do things is is really important to me. And I'm looking forward to that opportunity um, as we get closer to the season here. Um, and then for me personally, uh, the biggest thing for me is this. I had a really good summer of training. I'm feeling really good. I'm excited to get things going. And uh, yeah, we were, we were all here as a group in the summer working hard. So I'm excited just to get the season started. Patrick, jumping off some of the things that Coach mentioned, is you guys with all of those upperclassmen, like you talked about, coming back, what's sort of been some of the conversations about finishing off your career the way that you guys want to? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for us, we kind of have a great core coming back. And with those eight seniors, I think, you know, when we first got here at Providence, we had a lot of expectations of you know, winning championships and winning a lot of big games. And getting to this point, my senior year is just kind of panned out not happening that way. And I think not just myself, but our whole team and our core and our older guys are, are so hungry this year and excited to, to play in big games and try my a bit to just get on the ice and, and compete in this league because every night's a battle and there's so many good teams, uh, just especially this year. So with our core and we have a great group of younger guys coming in and a new goalie transfer. So we're really excited and just ready to compete and, and just play in this league. <laughs> Mike, you kind of alluded to it in some of the conversation about the rink, and, and I feel like there's always those things that we talk about outside more that actually get talked about inside. What's sort of been, if anything, the conversation with the group about some of those changes to that, and if sort of, okay, this is the last moment we talk about it, and then we kind of just move on? Yeah, you, you, you just hit the nail on the head. We really never talk about the about the rink. I think as coaches, you know, if we're going to go down to Providence or to Merrimack, we may change the way we practice that week, make sure things are, you know, in more confined spaces. Um, but, you know, we don't, you know, I mean, Chase would tell you, we don't really talk about the size of the rink. In fact, you know, we, you know, there's other teams in our league that have, you know, UMass has a big rink too, you know, so it's not like it was just us. For whatever reason, there was this, you know, there was this stigma around the Whittemore Center. You know, I think, it, you know, it had a lot to do with the success of the program going back for a lot of years uh, from the time it, it opened and, uh, you know, with the great teams that Dick had there over the years. I think it had a lot to do with the, you know, you know my assistant, Jeff Giuliano, won a national championship at BC, never won a game there. So I think that, you know, perpetuated a lot of the negativity is surrounds, you know, recruiting, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, as far as our group goes, uh, it was it's never really been addressed that you know it's just it's just home you know it's our you know it's home and it's smaller <laughs> 
Uh, Nate, question for you. I mean, going off of some of the things you said about that reflection, what's the line is how you and a staff evaluate how much you guys are processing that on a daily basis in the off season and then how you kind of disseminate that to the group and getting them sort of bought into, okay, these are the next steps we need to make to kind of take that jump. I think it's uh, that's a good question. I think it's um, exactly what you said. You're breaking it down to different steps. There's there's a lot of information as a coach that that you have and you know, and um, but you have to make it simple for your players so they're not going out and thinking. They're going out and reacting and playing the game. So you know, we wanted to see why we why we led the league in shots and didn't you know and, and finished fifth in goals. That was the big thing when we when we um, I thought we did a, a good job defensively. I thought we needed to improve our goal scoring. Um, there's a lot of aspects of it that that we looked at, and you know we, we have to simplify it then for the players um, and put it in a put it you know try to get it into their game a little bit more. Um, so when we were able to score goals in big moments in third periods of games. Any other questions for this group before we go? Let them get lunch. No. All right. Thanks very much. All right. We have Hillary Witt and Lauren Martin from UNH and Coach Dave Flint and Alina Mueller from Northeastern. I'll have each coach start with an opening statement and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, super excited for the season to get going. We've, uh, we've been practicing away from home for a bit with our renovations, so we're excited to be back in the wit. Um, and excited to have uh, a really deep roster this year with uh, a lot of veteran players. So looking forward to the year and looking forward to competing in Hockey East as usual. It's the uh, best conference in the country. Excited to uh, get back and get going here. I think for us, you'll see a little different look. We graduated 12 players. We have 10 new players, um, but I think we have a, a really strong core of returners and veteran leadership that's going to um, help this this new group of young players adapt quickly. And uh, just excited to get things going. Any questions for this group? Uh, Coach Witt, I understand you have a new rink at UNH. No. Um, though Mike made an interesting point about recruiting. I mean, he said that he felt that other schools might have used that against UNH. Uh, what's your outlook on it, and uh, how do you approach that? Um, I guess you'd have to ask the other coaches if they've used that against us. But, um, you know, I, I think it's it's less about the recruiting than it is about the way the game has evolved over time. In 1995, when the win opened, uh, there were 12 teams competing for a national championship. And, and today there's 41. And so, you know, I think uh, recruiting in general and um, the way the game's evolved and grown um, has made an impact. Uh, I'm most excited about the rink so that we can have a little more consistency for our players uh, and their development and, and our competitiveness as a team. So uh, I think some of our competitors are pretty happy about the, the change, but um, I think uh, they'd be surprised to know that I think I'm happier than them. Um, Coach Flynn, you guys have accomplished so much over the last few years, and it feels like you're getting closer and closer to knocking off some of those, checking off some of those milestones. Take me through sort of the summer evaluation process as you go through of accomplishing what you did and then trying to reclimb the mountain year in, year out. I think it's, I mean, it's it's a challenge every year, and, and to be so close two years in a row um, and, and fall just short of that um, has been really tough. And, and you, you know, so every year's a, a new year, new players, and a new challenge in front of you, and it's it it's never easy. So, you know, we always approach it. We don't we don't look at what we've accomplished in the past. We just kind of our approach has always been. You know, we, we take one game at a time and, you know, we focus on our league games. And then if we can get to the NCAA tournament, then that's that's a new season for us. And, and we try to build from there. So we can't really 
harp on what we've done in the past. Um, you know, we, we try to we try to build on it and and um, you know achieve some of those goals. But um, you know, every year's a new year, and it gets it's tougher and tougher every year. Kat Cornetta from the Boston Globe. Coach Flint, uh, one of the major graduations you had was in goal. Um, what are your plans for that position? Do you have a timeline for making a decision, or has it already been made? Yeah, it's already been made. Um, it's it's pretty easy decision for me. One of the Phillips is going to be our starter. Um, you know, I give her a lot of credit. She she waited three years in the wings behind Aaron and was very patient. A lot of a lot of goalies might not have stayed. Um, I've said it in the past. Gwyneth can she could have been a starter for most teams in the NCAA. She's she's very very good. So I feel really good about our goaltending situation. You know, obviously losing Aaron. And Frankel's is huge, um, but you know, I, I know Gwen's ready for the challenge and feel really good about that. Lauren, I'll ask you, Coach mentioned how you have a lot of veteran players coming back and as one of the leaders of the group, what's been some of the conversation with your group and your upperclassmen about wanting to get UNH to the level that you're looking for as you wrap up your career? Yeah, for sure. So uh, this will be my third year um, as part of the leadership group, um, and I'm also a fifth year, so I've been there for quite some time. Um, we do have a lot of upperclassmen. Um, I think the biggest thing is we've been so close over these past four years. We just need to tie up those loose ends, you know, um, just kind of put all the pieces together. We have them all. We just need to figure out a way to, um, you know, connect as a team and come closer. Um, yeah, but I'm super excited about this season, and I think we finally have all the pieces. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Alina, you've accomplished so much both individually and as a group, and, and we just talked about it with Coach. What's the next step first for you individually this year as you return for a, a grad year and trying to continue accomplishing those goals? Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, I want to stay healthy. Um, the past two years, I, I came in with an injury, um, so I'm really excited that uh, so far I'm I'm doing really well and, and um, can start the season healthy. Um, and yeah, you said I've played... Uh, all over all, uh, on many stages but I'm just always so happy and excited uh, to play in this league I think it's one of the best hockey I've ever um, played in and the group of girls we have together are so excited and eager to work hard and and this year I'm um, accomplish our big goal and so yeah we're taking one game at a time but really excited to be here for both of you, whichever one wants to take it, you, you mentioned how close you've gotten the last few years, and I feel like the closer you get when you come back the next year, the stronger Sharpie that the teams are circling you guys on the schedule. Can you speak a little bit to what it's been like to be the hunted, not that you haven't been for a while, but even more so as you've gotten so close and deep in the NCAA tournament and the challenges that that presents for a group? Yeah, I think um, I, I say to the team all the time, we have, we have a target on our back every game. Um, you know, when it, when a team beats us, um, it's it's like they they won a championship. And and I think back when I when I first started at Northeastern, we we could sneak up on teams and we could um, surprise some teams. And and now I, I think it's kind of turned a little bit. And and sometimes you know teams will sneak up on us and it's happened the last few years and, and that's one thing we can't let happen if you know we want to be our best and um, so we need to be prepared and, and our leagues our league's very good anybody can beat anybody on any given night and you know we've we've seen that in the past so um, for us it's you know you can't take anything for granted you can't rest on your laurels what you've done and we just you know like, like we've said one game at a time on the schedule and and uh, that's been our approach mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think an advantage is that our class has been a part of the transition to be the haunted um, team. Uh, when, when when I came in, um, yeah, we were not there where we are we're at now. So I think just always remembering like where we came from and um, yeah, how how much work you put in to be where we're at now uh, helps um, to just yeah feel uh, humbled and and happy to where we're at and, and not feeling any pressure. 
Hillary, I'll jump off of what Lauren mentioned about that feeling of like you guys are so close to sort of cracking through. What's the key to sort of pushing that message with the group, but also being accountable to some of those things that you're looking for in the group to kind of go to that next level? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, what Lauren mentioned, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster. Um, you know, for our success, you know, right before the pandemic, I thought we were really building and, and we did a, a good job uh, making it to the hockey's championship weekend. And then you know, we graduated eight and we brought in eight freshmen during, during a pandemic, six, six of which were international. And it was just a strange time. Uh, I think that um, that was the case for everybody. So that's not really an excuse. But I think when you're trying to build and get kids uh, developed and, and ready to go, uh, we were very, very young. And I think like Lauren said, we, we have a lot of veteran leadership now. We have a lot of depth and we have kids who have experience. Um, and so, yeah, putting it all together, we've got to score more goals. We've got to be better on special teams. And, um, you know, if we can take advantage of some of our opportunities, I think some of those scores would go the other direction. So I think we're close. But like we've said, this league is tough. Everybody can beat everybody and you got to be prepared every single day. So that's our goal right now to prepare every day and be ready to go. Any other questions for this group? Awesome. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up, we'll call up the women's teams from Providence and Vermont. All right, we have uh, Matt Kelly and Caroline Peterson from Providence and Jim Plummer from Vermont. Let's start with an opening statement from our coaches, and then we'll get to questions. Awesome. Uh, first, just want to thank Joe Britannia and congratulate him uh, on his award. Second, want to congratulate all the young women that uh, competed for their country in the World Championships recently and represented Hockey East uh, very well as well. So, uh, First, uh, for our group, obviously we're optimistic, we're excited. Uh, we have great depth. We're we have great uh, leadership on our group. We're a little older group this year, seniors and grads. We have 10 of them. Uh, so that excites us. And I think it's a pretty driven group to, to get back where we were a couple years ago. Great. Um, I also want to congratulate Joe. I've been fortunate to, to know Joe for a number of years and had a chance to have lunch with him this summer. And uh, he's made such a big impact on the game of college hockey and especially for women's hockey and a very deserving winner. Um, we were fortunate to be one of those teams that had international players as well and um, very excited for, for a great season in Hockey East. I think this league has just been getting so much better. And um, for us coming off a historic season, I think we're a veteran team as well. We've got six of our eight seniors from last year back for a fifth year. Um, and um, yeah, the expectations might be raised a little bit, but we're excited to, uh, to get going and we realize we still have a lot to prove. Any questions for this group? Jim, I'll start with one. You mentioned the historic nature of the season last year, and I feel like when you have one of those years where it feels like you're checking off milestones all the time, that next year becomes so important to try to believe that you're staying there rather than just want to climb up the mountain. What has been some of the conversations with the group about that and being able to build off of what was an amazing year last year? Um, well, I think I think there was a, a sense of, in our group last year that we weren't even satisfied satisfied with what we accomplished then. Um, and I think having a veteran group, having so many kids uh, come back for a fifth year, it, plus a, a few seniors, I think we have, we also have nine that that fall into that category. So um, I think they were they were part of a program that, that finished eighth four years in a row. And so I think, I think they're very internally motivated. And um, certainly as a coach, we realize how easy it is for complacency to to creep in. Um, so uh, yes, it's been talked about, but I think I think one of the most fun things about our program and our culture right now is we have a lot of intrinsically motivated people. Uh, it's it's really fun to be around this group. Was there one moment last year? I feel like sometimes out looks outside looking in, it's a different moment than inside. What was the maybe there wasn't one, but was there one moment inside where you guys knew that this might be something special. <laughs> 
honestly, it was uh, when I got COVID um, <laughs> in uh, in Worcester, and uh, we had one coach on the bench for a weekend, and I really felt in a in a weird way that uh, our team our team knew that they could they could compete. We'd already been through through a, a bunch of COVID. We've had departures for the Olympics. We had previously had uh, kids missing for the Olympic qualifiers. So we'd been we got on the bus with one goalie and two coaches, and we came back with one goalie and one coach. And I felt like in in a weird way that this was a great opportunity for the team to see how far they had come and how much ownership they had uh, for themselves. And um, and they they proved it uh, in that in that game that made me wonder if they needed needed me at all. <laughs> Matt, what was the process for you of evaluating last season for you as a group? Yeah, I think um, obviously at times we played really well, played great hockey. It's just, uh, I think Nate said it might be something around with Schneider, but scoring goals <laughs> was our biggest thing. Um, you know, we, again, I, I like the way we were playing. It's just, we were in a lot of one goal games and in years past, we were able to come out on top of those. And last year, um, a little snake bit and we weren't, you know, burying our chances. We were creating them, but and we came on the bottom end on a lot of those one goal games. Caroline, for you, you guys are a couple years off in NCAA tournament for the first time in a little bit. And then having the year like that last year, what are you guys having those conversations as a leadership group of trying to push the program and finish out your careers the way you want to? Yeah, I think uh, we didn't live up to our potential last season. And I think a lot of it is discussing just consistency. Even last season, we had some really, really great games where we played up to our potential, but then there were definitely games where we didn't. So I think this season it's coming back, knowing how good we can be and then just living up to that. Mm -hmm. For both coaches, we've had a bunch of conversations about the parity of the league, both on the men's side and the women's side. And I think that you're both kind of in positions to talk a little bit about that, what you've done with the programs the last few years. Can you each speak to some of the opportunities that presents for you guys as a program, but also the challenges of every year in trying to compete in the league and, and sort out where you guys fit in? Yeah, I think uh, obviously, like you said, the, there's so much parity in the league. You got to show up. You got to be consistent. Um, you know, from day one, you got to be ready to play. Um, everyone's getting better. Everyone's facilities are getting better. Everyone's getting better at recruiting. Everything everyone's doing is getting better. And you got to always be looking at uh, your craft and seeing how you can improve, how your group can improve, um, how you can, how your staff can improve to stay on top. Yeah, um, I think Coach Flint alluded to just uh, needing needing to bring it every night, knowing that that they had a, a target on their backs, and and I think the heart. I mean, clearly they've they've had a great run, and they're 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 deservedly the the preseason favorite. Um, but you really look around, and I look at every roster when we're doing our preseason poll, and I'm looking at every roster and seeing how much better every team is getting year after year, and he, there's a, you know like. Last year, I think we were picked sixth and came in second. I feel like every year there's there's one of these one or more of these stories, mm -hmm. and um, you know sometimes our league gets a knock for not having you know as many teams in the top ten or, or whatever. But I I think I think in a in a way from top to bottom it really is the most competitive league, and that 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 might make us look bad in a way. But I think those of us that are on the inside really appreciate the other coaches. Uh, what they're doing with their programs and just how hard it is to succeed in this league. <laughs> and just to add something to that, I know a couple of years ago, just in playoffs, I think all the lower seeds won <laughs> and moved on to the, the final four there. So, um, yeah, everyone, anyone can beat anyone. <laughs> For both head coaches, um, I asked some of the coaches earlier about recruiting in the New England region. Have you noticed any new trends in recruiting or um, kind of just different things you're noticing on the trail in New England? For me, honestly, like we've struggled with with New England recruiting for a number of years. There's uh, obviously a big attraction to the Bean Pot schools for for kids that are from this area, um, and so you know I think all of us end up finding our niche wherever we've we've gone more international over the last five or six years, and and Quebec for obvious geographic reasons, um, and um, you know. 
know, it's we, we would love to have we'd love to have more more New England kids, but it, it it's become harder. I do think the depth of the pool. I really see it in the class of 20, 2025 and from there on. I think there's so many good players throughout the world right now. I think it's going to make our game five years from now. It's going to look very different than it does even right now. Personally, I think the 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 young crop, the kids who were born in the second half of the 2000 decade, where women's hockey was becoming more of a, a known quantity and more more visibility in the NCAA championship had been going on for more years and three Olympics had happened. I think, I think the, the birth year is like 2007 and on. I see, and I mean this all over North America and I'm sure it's the same across across the, the, the pond, but I think that's that's something, that's a trend that, I, that I'm definitely seeing. Yeah, I think uh, obviously um, all over the world it's growing, and you know obviously New England's the same. You know it's growing. There's plenty of talent. We've we've had uh, New England kids on our roster since I've been there, and um, we continue to have them. And but we also have kids from Europe, kids from Canada, kids from Quebec, kids from Minnesota. So again, we're we're kind of all over the place, um, trying to find the best talent to, to make our group better. Any other questions for this group? All right, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Right. All right, next up, we're going to call up the players and coaches from Northeastern Men and Vermont. I know I lied and I went slightly out of alphabetical order, but it's for the math of the chairs up here, so that's why Vermont's first. So let's start with an opening statement from our coaches, and then we'll get to some questions. Jerry? Yeah, just really looking forward to working with this group this year. Uh, we've got great leadership. Uh, it's been a long off season. It's been really excited to get back on the ice. Thanks, Jake. Uh, for us, this is the third year of our plan. We're excited to uh, be changing our expectations a little bit of this team uh, going forward. Uh, it's a real pleasure for me to sit next to Jacques Bucot, who we just named as captain, big part of the leadership group of what we have going forward. And uh, I know things are on the right track when Jacques there. So we also have Jacques and Aiden McDonough here. So let's open the floor up for questions for this group. And this uh, question's for you, just obviously with Frozen Fenway being announced, just what's kind of the excitement level behind getting to play at Fenway? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, growing up around here, going to baseball games at Fenway my whole life, and um, even going to the uh, the Bruins uh, game there a few years back. So, um, been a bucket list game for mine, and super excited to, to get there and, uh, you know, play a game so close to, to home and so close to our school. So, it'll be a lot of fun. Like you said, close to home for you. Have you ever skated there? What kind of, you know, fun memories do you have of Fenway? I skated there once um, when the Bruins played the Flyers, I think. Uh, there was, like, open ice, and, you know, my dad somehow got us out there. Um, so I just bombed around. I think I was, like, 10 or 11. Um, but that's about it. So looking forward to going back. Andrew Mahoney, Boston Globe. Uh, Jerry, you know, you guys uh, broke through and won your first regular season crown last year. You have a, a talented group coming back. Good. Does that uh, does the outlook feel different going into this season? No, I think last year going into the year, we uh, I'm not even sure you know what the polls were last year, but as a group, we felt like we had a good team in the locker room, and I think that's all that kind of matters to us. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, this league is so good, game in, game out, no matter who you're playing, and um, you know you got to show up every weekend. Every point is important, and um, you know each each week you really just want to continue to keep getting better and better. Uh, for Todd, you talked about the expectations maybe changing a little bit. What, where kind of are you guys in that process, and, and how, how how do they change going into this year? Well, everybody would come into a season with a plan, and, and plans are really easy to design, but they're they're not so easy to build. So when we use the word expectations, we would often talk about how they have to be adjusted season to season. So I feel that the the way this team is right now, under the leadership of Jacques and the rest of our leadership group, they're they're ready to take the next step and progress really isn't linear and for this team to see the uh, 
the trials and tribulations that have happened to this team in the past couple of years and to see young men like Jacques and the rest of that group mature and now to see that they're ready to take a different step in a different direction. At some point in your career as a team or as an individual, you have to win. And we will be introducing the word win a lot more for the team this year. I'll jump in with one. I feel like there's coaches always hate excuses and hate that word. And there's a line between excuses and what's real and legitimate. And you mentioned the challenge of sort of going to year three of your program. How much was everything around the last two years in COVID make that a challenge of implementing you wanting to do? And how much more beneficial is it to have gone through that and now have year three a little bit more of a quote unquote normal lead up to the season? Yeah, thank you for the question. I, I would say I, I like your word excuses you can either have excuses or you can have results you can't have both that's how that's what we feel uh, the last I checked everybody had to deal with COVID there's 11 teams in our league and they're all led by really good coaches and they're all great players I truly believe Hockey East is the best conference in all of college hockey but every single one of those other 10 teams in our conference they also had COVID they had the same trials it's just it depends where you are in your maturation pro uh, process like of, of your team um, we are now at a place, I believe, where we've amassed some talent. We've recruited to a specific identity. We want to have leaders like Jacques who, who lead like a forest fire. Like he walks in the room and that's UVM hockey to me. And we want to have 28 of those guys. And for us to be able to now openly talk about us taking the next step, I think that's a big step for us, if that makes sense. We, we need to win now. That's, that's a big part of what we have to be. Jack, for you, sort of the same question in a way that Coach is talking about sort of taking that next step. What's the challenge for you as a leader of sort of changing the language of the program to saying that word win a little bit more? Yeah, well, I think it's exciting as a program. Uh, the past few years have been tough. There's been a lot of challenges, but I think any locker room you want to talk about winning as, as a group, and I think for us it, it's exciting. It's it's going to be fun, and I think it's it's a challenge that we're all ready for. And we've been through a lot of stuff as a as a group, and our leadership group is is ready for that next mm -hmm. step. So Aiden, again, just obviously coming off a, a great year last year. Just what did you really focus on in the off season heading into a new year? Yeah, I think um, I think this off season, uh, similar to the last few, has been you know really focused on getting stronger, um, getting faster, uh, and working a lot on my skating. I think those those three things have been uh, stuff that you know the coaching staff here has harped on me, and uh, something that I put a lot of you know emphasis on myself is to just become a better skater and become faster. And um, you know they know that's going to help me take that next step in my game. So that's what I've been focusing on uh, in the last few summers, and you know extra emphasis again on this summer. just throw one more out for Jerry and Aiden. You guys have won so many trophies the last few years, whether that's Bean Pots or now a Hockey East regular season. Aiden, especially for you, is now the leader of the group. What's the challenge of keeping everyone's mindset as high as it needs to be to continue to knock off those trophies and continue to add to the trophy case? Yeah, I think, um, I think for us, um, we've kind of gotten a little bit of a taste of, you know, getting to the tournament last year. Um, and it didn't go the way that we wanted it to. And I think, uh, you know, getting that taste and realizing what it takes and how hard it is to get there, but then realizing that once you get there, it's it's only four games. Mm -hmm. um, is something that I think a lot of us have, have realized and, um, you know, really thought about. And it's going to help us, I think, this year moving forward. Um, you know, I think last year we, we got to those big, important games and we, you know, we kind of took a step back in those big games. I think now it's about getting to those games and, and taking full advantage of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to add to that, I think, you know, every season, everybody's undefeated right now. I think I said that earlier. So you've got to earn everything you get. Um, just because you uh, did something this past season or a couple seasons before really doesn't mean much. Um, we've got to come out as a really, really hungry group this year. Um, we've got tremendous leadership. Um, you know, we speak about our culture all the time and guys that drive our culture. And um, Dunzo next to me is, is that next guy in line. We've been blessed with some really good captains and um, we feel like we've got a great locker room led by by our leadership and we just
just need to be a really hungry group. Um, never be satisfied in anything. Uh, we want to make sure that we continue to get better, not even week to week, but on a daily basis. Um, I think uh, Dunzo will tell you we're excited about our practice today. We got to practice today, and we got to be way better than we were tomorrow. And I think if we stick with that mindset, um, hopefully the results are going to be there at the end of the season for us. Any last questions for this group? All right, thank you all so much for being here. Thanks a lot for coming, everybody. Thank you. And our last group today is the Merrimack men's team. We needed the extra chair, so we gave save you guys for last. So we have Ben Brar, Jordan Seaford, and Scott Borick of the Merrimack men's team. Coach, we'll start with an opening statement and then open it up for questions. Uh, really not a lot to say. We're just excited about the upcoming season. Uh, we understand how strong the league is and how strong it is every year. It just gets, keep, keeps getting better, so the challenge keeps getting greater. Uh, but we're really excited about starting another chapter in another season for Merrimack hockey and hopefully moving the program forward another step. Questions? Uh, as a team, I mean, for, really for all three of you, uh, you guys took a pretty big step last year. Kind of looking back in retrospect, what did you feel like were, were the biggest reasons that such a, such a big step was taken last year? Yeah, we definitely made a big step last year. Uh, I think it goes to our leadership last year for sure with uh, Max Newton kind of came in and partway through the COVID year, he kind of took over the team, I'd say. Didn't really need uh, Borzy in there kind of telling us what to do. We kind of just got together as a group and could figure things out ourselves. Yeah, I don't really want to look, you know, look previously on last year too much. I want to look forward. Um, you know, we were cut short last year, losing to Northeastern with a couple seconds left and uh, moved us down to fifth place or sixth place, had to play in the playing game. Um, but we're really looking forward to this year. We have a bunch of new guys coming in, five grad transfers up front, a um, couple defensemen that are going to be freshmen that are going to need to make a big impact. So we're excited. Yeah, for both uh, Ben and Jordan, as, as forwards, you know, you guys played an up-tempo style last year, scored a lot of goals. Your power play was one of the best, if not the best in the league. How do you duplicate that again this season? Yeah, obviously we had uh, a lot of turnover last year, but as Jordan mentioned, we brought in a lot of good guys, and we just kind of get back to the drawing board and just find out what works, what doesn't, and just go from there. Can't speak too much on the power play. I haven't been on it, so... <laughs> Scout power play is very good, though. <laughs> Coach, uh, near the end of last season, you signed an extension, and uh, some people might, you know, look at Merrimack as smaller schools as a stepping stone. You obviously don't see it that way. Uh, what does that say about, you know, the future of the program and, uh, you know, your commitment to uh, Merrimack? says a lot about my age, I think. <laughs> uh, but it's funny, I'm in this room, I've been the youngest person in the room and, uh, with the coaches. Now I think I've been the oldest person in the room with the coaches. But um, I'm just honored to coach at Merrimack. I think that um, you know, I grew up not too far from there in Swampskit and skated there, skated with Ronnie Anderson and his group uh, back in the day. And I'm just proud to be part of Merrimack College and, and the rich uh, kind of the growth. It's not a tradition, really. It's just kind of a, a ever-changing world on campus. And, uh, you know, 315 Turnpike Street uh, kind of underplays how really nice the campus has become. And being part of the growth of the school was really important to me. Uh, being lockstep with the, the president to the uh, athletic director and things, those things matter. And having a chance to make an impact on a campus like Merrimack is something that I really cherish. Uh, ben and Jordan talked about the impact that the transfer has last year. You guys have a group of, tra of transfers coming in again this year. Is that, was that part of the plan? Or when, when you lose a couple of guys to the NHL, did they kind of alter some of the plan? Or how did that kind of evolve over the course of the spring? You know, I think our, um, I wasn't a big believer in the graduate transfer. Uh, then we had a couple of guys last year who really impacted our locker room. They were good players. I mean, no doubt that uh, Max and Jake and uh, Steve were good players, but they were really good good people in the locker room and we felt and we lost so many guys from last year's team including Declan and uh, Zach Ewins who signed NHL contracts that we really needed to you know, boost up or beef up our older class and those five
five players uh, trying to assist these two guys as well as their classmates uh, to try to keep, keep us moving forward. So it wasn't really by design. Uh, it ended up being that way. We were fortunate that four of those players wore letters on their sweater last year. Uh, that adds to our locker room right away. Um, so we're excited. And, and each of those grad transfers has already made a positive impact on our campus. Coach, I'll throw one out. It, I feel like you know when you get hired as a coach, wherever it might be, you're selling your message, and it's you're basically selling belief without evidence. And then at some point, you have the year where you start selling belief with evidence. What, obviously, your message may not have changed, but how much does having that year help in terms of what you're selling to have a little bit of the year that you guys had last year behind it? Well, the funny thing is uh, the wins and losses don't always dictate how hard your team's working. Uh, and for the first three years I was at Merrimack, I thought our teams worked really hard. Uh, we, we stayed together really well. I thought we did a lot of good things, but we just didn't get results. Uh, having the opportunity to win some games last year, to put a bit of a streak together, uh, it gave the players, I believe, a real um, a belief in the words that have been said for a long time. Uh, and now I think their eyes, uh, their appetite's bigger. And that's kind of our goal. Let's have a big appetite. Just because we're in a league, where uh, we're not the household name like some of the teams in our league doesn't mean our appetite can't be just as big as theirs. So uh, we're excited to compete, and I think that the, the success of last year will help us get off to a good start this year. Uh, for Ben and Jordan again, so now you guys have been here for a few years, so you know, you've seen what it takes to be successful and so on. When you look at the team this year and the challenges ahead of you this season, uh, what will be some of the biggest factors that will decide how far you guys go this year? Yeah, I'll just I'll touch on the new guys. Like obviously, a lot of new transfers coming in, and even freshmen. Um, we got to get those guys ingrained into our culture as fast as possible. Um, trust the process and believe in what coach says. And from there, I think you know, with the leaders that we already have, the guys like that have been here at the campus and have in, have had impact at the campus. I think it's valuable that we can all just you know come together and, and build that culture. Yeah, as uh, Scott had mentioned before, that my at least my first two years, we were in those close games, but it seemed like we'd always find a way to just find a way to lose. But last year, I think we kind of took a step forward and found a way to win those close games. So I'm just looking forward to see what we can do this year. Any other questions for this group? All right, all set. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so this concludes the press conference portion of our media events today.